when I am looking at the earth from above, I could actually see that it does have a dome over it. It's, it is a flat surface in this moment in time because it did become inverted and it has a dome over it. But then it also has another dome up or under it, which this goes into the to the world bifurcation. This other world on the other side of it or next to it, but it's linear to it, but the way we can understand it is it's spheric, is on the other side of it or next to it, which we're going to learn about that in Antarctica, okay? So this world is linear to it, and it's all existing within pockets and spaces of dimensions, all in one pocket in space. You understand time and space, you understand dimensions, and you understand that. With the 3D, what happens is that we became this physical illusion. This construct became into a dome line. So it looks like this. When remote viewing the Earth, we have to understand that it is in a third dimension. So energetically, definitely is spheric. It more aligns energetically for it to be a sphere because that's what typically planetary spheres are. They're spheric in rotational. But what happened, as we know, with the fall of Atlantis and the two third world split that we always talk about, we have two worlds and many worlds occurring in one. What's going on here is that we are seeing these worlds physically and they're coming into more of an awareness to the disclosure and overall people who are starting to question there's a grand shift you feel it you feel it on earth people are waking up people are not as submissive and as programmed and as controlled as they were and they're beginning to question and when the consciousness questions uh that's where it begins expansion of soul and heart begins then what happened with the matrix is that when you're looking at the stars it's all projection so the stars that are above you they're real but it's a projection so just like your physical body is an illusion everything in this world is a projection of the matrix so the stars they're real but because they have consciousness rooted inside of them but they're not really there because they're a physical illusion you understand because we're inside the matrix. But beyond, if we came out of the matrix, then we could see the infinity of cosmos and stars and how it's not just a projection, how we're seeing. So again, the stars are real, but they're, because we're in the physical, that's their illusional body, you can say, but they have consciousness inside, just like we have consciousness inside our physical bodies. We've been talking about the inner earth for many years, and we've been talking about the different tunnels and gateways that you can come in through through sacred lands and we haven't given you the sacred lands because some of them we cannot share Manchester is an important one we've been sharing Sedona is another portal there's stellar gateway portals in all over the earth that can lead you into another dimension so you could call it the inner earth because dome like there is a dome under it so there's a flat surface and then the other world basically bifurcated just like the image I showed you So we have us in the physical, but then there's this organic world that is still operating in the fifth dimension next to us. And that's the inner earth and what's beyond Antarctica. Well, also, it makes sense how everything is operating within parallel to one another because everything is parallel to one another in time and space. So here we are. This is supposed to be us. And outside this dome, which then passing the Antarctica walls, you go beyond so why would you be able to connect to all these different venus saturn planetary spheres outside our realm because they're parallel to us in time and space so now we're understanding time and space at a whole nother level and you can travel through these waters and those spaceships that are guarding us where do you think they're coming from they're right next to us here we are and then the world continues to flow on but if there are pockets of spaces through quantum physics that you can travel into and then you enter say venus and remember we're we're in a small portion of our little part of the universe we're at so these are you can say the direct races and the direct beings that are closest to us but then it goes infinite of course beyond that but you do have to be a matching vibration to these worlds so that's where it gets hard there were people who left and they went into these realms and they talked about how 
there were dinosaurs and these animals that we thought were extinct, but they were all inside the walls and there was gigantic people. See, but that's the world that we were be before we inverted. So that was the fifth dimension going into the sixth dimension and so on. So you have to be a vibratory match to go into these realms. So how clear are you? How, how, how much of uh, energy and so on have you vibrated to? So is the world prepared to come out of the Antarctica rings? Energetically, scientifically, they are not because they need to be a matching vibration. However, definitely could be possible. You don't know how this consciousness and awareness will come into earth and shift all our our consciousness and could we raise to a level just like we're going to see in the future when ascension happens to be able to the other thing is that when i was talking to uh, benevolent beings like and i was channeling like for example cleopatra if you listen to the channeling a couple years ago she said the dark romans that were really kabbalah illuminati infiltrated egypt and took the sacred knowledge that they had she was able to escape it's a lie she didn't commit suicide with a stake she knew she was a seer she was an oracle she can see so what she did is she went into the inner earth she and all these beings who have ascended out a lot of them are outside in you can say beyond antarctica they're there in these different worlds and dimensions are there any other pyramids and things located in our antarctica as well Yes. So if we close our eyes right now, you can actually see pyramids and you can see multiples of them spread out and they are part of the dome energy field. In order for you to come out again, you do have to be a matching vibration. So these people who did cross over was because they were pure in heart, like the, the airplane pilot and then the, the ship. I know we have some of these people who are trying to get past and go past Antarctica, but even then Antarctica, that is huge. When we go beyond Antarctica, that's when we enter the different worlds and dimensions that are stellar gateways that enter you into these worlds and planetary spheres that are Venus or Saturn or, or so on, Pleiades, constellations. So they're all within pockets. If you could imagine, so you were a pocket here, even though we might have a dome at the top and the and then there's another pocket here, there's another pocket here, another pocket here of worlds. Can you enter these worlds? And they're all parallel to one another. So while we can't see our neighbors, brothers and sisters in these different lands, I guess they can see us. How can they see us as we are infected and needed to be quarantined? They can see us because they're in higher dimensions. So everything bird's eye view can see. When a bird sees from above, and even though they're parallel to us, they can still see us. It's many different ways that they could see us through portals themselves that they might have. Maybe they're seeing us through scrying methods, through crystalline technology. They're seeing us through their third eye in higher dimensions. So it's like a bird that's flying and you look at everything below you. You can see everything. But if you were looking at a lois, uh, maybe you're a tiny little ant in the grass. All you're really seeing is the highness of the grass, right? And then that there's a sky, but you can't see that there's perhaps buildings around you because you're so tiny in that little grass. Is all space in the universe really water? So we talked about this in a manifestation course. Like, you know, when you blink your eyes and there's tiny little lights, like they look like tiny little sperms. You keep blinking and you're like, my eyes are seeing something. They're little dots. But if you look and you just pay attention to them, they, they're tiny little sperms. So creation is an infinite waters of creation, a womb with tiny little sperms of father. So there's mother and father in all creation. So you can feel yourself energetically, you're underwater. It's creational water. This plasmic field of source love light is around you. All within creation is made out of creational water. And then father with his sperm to cultivate and create life. Yeah, we are water. We have photons. So we're in water right now. Isn't that beautiful? If water is what separates the different worlds according to this flat map, then space is not empty or dark like we were taught. Exactly. Everything connects from water to water. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love you like la 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 la.